We have one goal. Keep Luca alive. We have one option, so we know it has to be an option that keeps him alive. We have to bust out the strange. Well, time to bust out the strange. Everyone else, expendable. As long as Luca's alive, that's all that matters. Is the strange just the silent treatment? Yeah, what? How is this the strange? At the sight of Iggy taunting back, something in Luca snapped. Yeah, Luca, push him in the pool. To a look of shock as Luca launched himself into his stomach. Iggy's clothes were drenched in the glowing ooze. Iggy's a dead man, so that's one kid down. Oh, okay. Wasn't expecting that. I do feel pretty guilty about that. Uh, yeah, I mean that wasn't exactly the plan I had intended. Uh, I figured you were gonna die. Gonna be honest, but hey, Luke is alive. That's all that's important. That was pretty intense. We just killed a kid. The person at the warehouse, the strange ooze, and what it did to Iggy. Was Rolu caught up in all of this? But yeah, so uh, we may have just killed Iggy, probably did, but hey, Luca's gotta live. This is the only path we have available to us, so therefore, it must be the right path. Therefore, sorry Iggy. Oh, so I don't trust this guy. Like, look at that smirk on his face. Alright, bullshit. We know for a fact that Rolo doesn't show up safe and sound because in another timeline, Roxy came up and we're just like, oh, we still haven't found him yet. This guy's a liar. Nah, he knows the woods like the back of his hand. Lucas said so in the past. Luca, why do you believe this? Oh, the grandmom's definitely gonna try to kill us. Beck glanced toward Luca. Alright, all's well that ends well. No, that's does not end well. Beck's now gonna die. All right, I feel like that's some literal foreshadowing. I mean, she's. If he hurried, he might just make it home before sundown. I feel like she's going to literally kill us. Our harvest awaits. Luca took a deep breath and gingerly opened the door, stealing himself for Grand's wrath. But hey, we might finally be able to actually see the festival. Let's see. Oh, where's the granny? Yeah, I feel like he has a really good excuse for why he left. His best friend was missing. Yeah. Alright, so she's going to be up in our room waiting for us and she's going to kill us. Maybe this is the wrong way after all and I don't even know what I could do. Luca was alone. The house was empty. Alright, so now I'm 100% convinced that that hyena looking dude is evil. He told us to come here so he's going to have his henchmen come and get us now after he got back. Don't go to bed, dude. By the pond, listening to small waves lap against a rock. Oh, that's a good. Father sat in a folding chair in front of him. Oh, I feel like this is about to get dark. He spoke. Why don't you grab me some nice bait? Sure thing, Dad. Luca hopped over to the tackle box and popped open the lid. I trust nothing in this game anymore after what it's been doing. Inside was a rolling, buzzing mass. Ew. With bees? Ew. Fish with bees than honey. Pick us out a good one. That's just not true. And plucked out a bee. He could feel its wings struggle between his finger and thumb, holding it at arm's length. He hurried over. His father deftly baited the hook and examined his work. Why would he reach into a big mass of bees and like why? What? Interesting choice. With a practiced flick of the wrist, the line buzzed in a graceful arc. The water accepted it without a splash or ripple. The wrong choice. 
What? My perspective, the pond began to freeze over. Sometimes we gotta make the wrong choice before we can make it right. Pallid ice propagated across the still surface with an alarming speed. Oh no. Lucas scrambled back as the ground beneath him turned cold. Dad, I don't understand. Sorry, kiddo. Understanding isn't always part of the deal. The relentless ice shot through the fishing line toward his father. Dad, look out! His father casually wound the reel. None of it's your fault, you know. Never was. Dad, we have to go! Luca grabbed his father's shoulders, trying to pull him away. Please, you, you have to run! The ice crackled as it spread across his father's hands. That's the thing about fishing, Luca. His chest began to crystallize. You toss your hook in, and you never know what you're gonna pull out. A shock of searing cold ran up Luca's arms. He gave one last desperate tug. The chair tipped backwards in a single frozen mass. Luca tried to stop the momentum, but it was too late. He watched the icy form of his father slam into the hard ground, shattering into a thousand pieces that crowded around his feet. Dad, I don't understand. What does all this mean? The gentle rustle of leaves was the only reply. Yeah, I figured immediately that that was going to be him reliving his dad's death. But it, it, I feel like that's not exactly how it happened. Oh, Roller's trying to contact us. Or it's aliens. I'm still not dismissing the fact that aliens could be a big thing in this game. He could hear Rolo amongst the noise. But it's Rolo this time. So Rolo's actually alive. That's honestly surprising. Rolo's voice was coming through more clearly now. Alright, so he 100% is kidnapped. And is definitely by that hyena looking dude. Yeah, of course. Oh, it was probably Mr. Nunker and he shoved him back in the phone booth and sent him down to the place where Luca got sent. Although, it look, it's, for whatever reason, Rollo's alive, which is weird. I figured they would have killed him outright at this point. Maybe they aren't child murderers. Maybe they're just horrible people that kidnap children. More interested in what? Mr. Kerr. So that's the dude we have to now look out for, as well as Mr. Nunker, the grandma. Are there any good adults in this game? Yeah, don't trust Mr. Kerr. He... The signal went silent. Luca held still, waiting for a response. His pounding heartbeat marking the passage of time. Rolo's voice began to fade. Oh, the treehouse would be a safe place. No one would know where it is, and it wouldn't be at the house with the grandma. So, honestly, a good place to hide, I think. Well, now I am not convinced at all that this is a good idea. The game... The game has made it clear time and time again you're supposed to do the opposite of what Rolo tells you to do. So I think we're gonna die if we go to the treehouse now. Luca heard a group of footsteps approaching. It's the he people trying to come and kill him. Being spotted. And it, it's the grandma and her... Mm, I knew it. So maybe that guy is going to be easier to fold. Like, the other two do not seem like they're going to fold. Even the grandma looks like she's determined. Like, all right, time to kill Luca. What danger? Mr. Tolliver took one long, quiet breath. Okay, so they're not working with the Valentines. That's actually good information. We know we can trust the Valentines now. Wait, but that's weird. Because I know that the clipboard people who set up the tent worked... No, they set up the tent and they worked for Mr. Kerr, but they set up the tent that advertised the Valentine stuff. 
Huh? Okay, so maybe they're not trying to kill Luca? That this is, oh, you think it's all Luca's fault. What is Operation Spark Plug? What is going on? I know all three of those guys must be evil now. Oh, and she, did she know we were there? Hello, Batman. Batgirl. Why is your name Dawn? I... That still bothers me. Organized and determined is a very dangerous recipe for people who are obviously killers, it looks like. Yeah, what's gonna happen with the festival? It seems like it's building up to it. Ooh, so that means that Tolliver dude is definitely in on it if he called her and then told her about Rolo, essentially. Yep, those guys are all in on the kidnapping. Yeah. Alright, uh, but way to think of it like a news reporter. The scoop of the century. Dude, a kid's been kidnapped and one kid's been killed by being pushed in a lake of ooze. And another is now with the guy who's responsible for the original kidnapping. Yeah, this isn't a good recipe. Kids are dying. And like that, we have now discovered the smartest character in the series. The one person who doesn't join Luca. Alright, so we know that this guy's safe. What what sign? The two boys shared a mischievous grin. I'm looking forward to seeing what little prank they pulled off. I feel like we can since we know we can trust the Valentine boy, it must be an actual just like thing to mess with people. It looks exactly like they haven't touched the festival sign, so I don't know what they are talking about. But hey, and why is the treehouse light on? I don't trust this. I don't trust this. Wait, does anyone else see the thing in the corner there? By the rocket, behind the rocket? Like, it looks like it's gonna ha something's gonna be there. You, how do you still trust Mr. Kerr at this point, dude? It's very obvious he's evil. Like I said, there was a thing back there. Luca could only see a cloaked shape behind the rocket. Are there hazmat men up here too? I told you, we should never listen to Rolo. Also, what weapons do you have, Luca? We could really use one. Oh, that's Iggy! Iggy's not dead yet! Fear gripped Luca's throat. But his face is gonna be melted off, I'm betting. Yeah, his face is gonna be all melty. Okay, gonna be honest, that's a lot better than what I expected. Probably not great for him, but better than what I thought it would be. Wait, who's they? Luca reached over empathetically. Iggy's tone jolted to dejected anger. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest, I'm kind of on Iggy's side this time. Uh, he's a little snot-nosed brat when he was talking earlier, but he didn't deserve to be, you know deformed forever Luca slumped to the ground overwhelmed by guilt yeah Luca's got to be feeling like a lot of guilt he's apparently feels guilty for the death of his father he's 
probably feeling guilty for the kidnapping of Rolo, and now he's done this to Iggy. Luca's not great. That's not a bad way to say that, Iggy. I'm just going to put that out there. Okay, but like, do not dismiss the power of friendship. Have you ever seen an anime? It always works. Who's they? Please explain! Thank you, Luca, for actually asking a question. That is relevant. And of course, we're not gonna get the answer because I have an interruption from Rolo. Called it. Who's they? The clipboards? What? You're afraid of those guys? How are you afraid of someone who calls it that? How can you be afraid of someone who goes knock, 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 knock? Like, come on. I, I can't find that terrifying at all. Alright, I find it a little terrifying when they all have their cult. I made that joke and I didn't think it would come true. So yeah, there's a lot of them there. Okay, but if that's all of them, then how small is that company? Like, it looks like they have a lot of resources, but that's all their employees? That's not that many. Okay, but we can't tell it's creepy. Okay, yeah, they definitely want Iggy. Alright, so I'm guessing we're about to be presented with another choice. We either give up Biggie and save ourselves, or we try to help Biggie and we kill Luca. Like I said at the beginning of the episode, we're keeping Luca alive. Luca grabbed the walkie talkie and headed for the window. What's your plan, Luca? What? That looks like it's not going to do anything. I hate this dude. I honestly hate this guy. I want to I, I want to see push him in the little ooze. But honestly, what's a weapon made by Rolo going to do? The game has been trying to tell us not to believe in Rolo's stuff. How are you going to help? You're going to help him by killing him, I bet. Yeah, wait, why would we trust you? You lied to us. A pretty honking big question? Dude, talk like a normal person. You know you're evil. We know you're evil. Just, come on. Yeah. You lied to us. You mother... Dude, I kind of like Iggy. Maybe he's a good character. Her smile faltered. Oh, I'm sorry. Did he hurt your little feelings by calling you creepy? What is with this guy? Luca's grip tightened on the MCDC. That's a pretty big fib, dude. He well, one, he's not resting. We were just talking to him, and two, safe. He got kidnapped, so he lies all around. Oh, so the choice isn't gonna be Luca versus Iggy. It's gonna be Rollo versus Iggy. 
sorry, Iggy, but I kind of like Rolo more. I'm sorry, but like, if it comes down to it, I'm sacrificing you. Yeah, sorry, Iggy. He was caught in a trap. What do you do when there's no hope? Iggy wiped his cheeks with a sleeve. What are you gonna do, Luca? Oh, whenever it's a one answer thing, you know, that means we're gonna die. Also, how are you gonna fight all these guys? Dude, that looks like it can't do anything, and it was made by Rolo. How do you have faith in this? Luca summoned his most insolent demeanor. Yeah, dude, come on. What were you expecting? Honestly, yeah, where did they get the plunger? Oh, you thought we were good pals because you kidnapped my friend? Well, it looks like we failed at keeping him alive. I don't know what we could have done. What? How did we die? What? What happened? How did those guys kill us? What did they do? I didn't have an option. Let's put a pin in this for now. Like, what could I have done? There's nothing else I can do. Wait. Oh, I unlocked something for this. So I now have to go back to the left side of the tree. But that'll have to be in the next episode. Maybe we can keep Luca alive for more than one decision this time. Unlikely, based off of what I've been seeing, though. But yeah. I'm looking forward to trying, at least. And remember... Have a good day. Bye.